In the last episode, we discussed the forces starting to collect in Korea. The second invasion officially has begun. And let's not forget Yi Soon Sin being replaced with Won Kyun. I'm Stefan, and this is Japan at War. While Won Kyun was establishing himself as commander of the Korean Navy, the Japanese Navy was gathering in Busan and was bolstered by large Takabune armed with a few of the captured Korean cannons and handheld Ozitsu. While this certainly was an improvement over the naval forces that they had used in 1592, they were, well, they were still much weaker than the standard Pinoxen of the Korean Navy. Oh, I should also say that there's actually a lot of discrepancies about how many Japanese ships there was. I mean, anywhere between 500 to 1,000 from what I've seen. Now, whatever you want to believe is, of course, up to you. Naval leadership was brought more in line, too, as Hideyoshi appointed Kunishi Yukinaga to oversee all of the individual commanders which would cut down on some of the rivalry, hopefully. Now, the Korean Navy was currently at Hasando Island, and the Japanese were, well, they were anxious for a confrontation, but decided not to make a move against them there. Instead, Yojiro, remember Yojiro? Well, he appeared once again in the camp of Kyongsang Army Commander Kim Ung so he told him about how the Japanese were planning on transporting hundreds of thousands of soldiers from Tsushima. But if the Korean Navy could intercept them, well, they could end the war before it ever began. They could do this by sailing east towards Busan. Kim Ung so passed this information on with the acknowledgement that this information could indeed be fake. But he also said that it seemed real. And just like before, Commander-in-Chief Kwan Yul believed it and commanded his naval commander to make the move. This naval commander wasn't Yi Soon Sin, though. It was Wan Kyun. And it's actually kind of funny, because he now had the same apprehension that his predecessor slash rival, had. He suggested to the commander-in-chief that it would actually make more sense for the army to attack Angle Po, the Japanese main coastal defense first, and then he could move in once it was safe. Which is actually smart. Quan Yul angrily disagreed. In his mind, this was just another naval commander making more excuses to do nothing, and commanded him to make the attack. Wan Kyun was actually starting to have many in the government turn against him. Even King Sanjo was supposedly regretting replacing Yi Soon Sin with Wan. The pressure for a decisive naval victory was so high that on July 31st, he set sail. He made his way east from his base at Hassan Island, but ran into about 12 Japanese ships and briefly skirmished with them. The skirmish didn't last long, though, as he ordered his ships to turn around and return to base. Quan Yu was unsatisfied by this and pressured him into action. On August 17th, he set sail towards Busan. On Hassan Island, the Japanese had spies in the hills that were able to alert their comrades in Busan when they saw that the Korean Navy was preparing to depart their ports. Angle Po was still a concern to Wan Kyun, so he wisely led his fleet around Koje Island, where they ran across a small group of Japanese ships and quickly destroyed them, and then continued toward Choyongdo, which was near Busan. August 20th, 1597, the sun was setting. Wan Kyun's men were actually quite tired. They were also outnumbered. Even though Wan Kyun's ships were a respectable 200 in strength, and they were also much superior in design, they were still facing a force of, like I said, anywhere between 500 to 1,000. Wan Kyun gave the order for his ships to rush the enemy. Instead of meeting the Korean Navy, the Japanese retreated and then turned around to face them, then retreated again. 
They did this over and over. See, for the Japanese, the goal was simple. Tire the sailors in the Korean Navy. When they were so tired that they could barely row towards the Japanese fleet, the Japanese turned around and attacked. Around 30 Korean ships were boarded, the crew killed, and the ships set ablaze. The ships that survived the Japanese charge then retreated while those 30-odd ships were being destroyed. They made their way to Kodak Island. Once there, one of Wan's captains begged the commander to allow his men to go ashore and get water for the tired men. The Koreans were quite sure that there was a decent-sized Japanese garrison there, but made the assumption that they would actually be able to quickly get water before the, they could catch on. They were wrong. A force of around 3,000 led by Shimizu Yasuhiro attacked as the Koreans left their ships, and 400 of Wan's men lost their lives, with several more Korean ships being burned. From Kadok Do, the remnants of the Korean Navy continued west and eventually found their way into Chilchonyang, which was a strait between Koje and Chilchon. This has been seen by many historians as one of Wan Kyun's biggest mistakes, as the strait was so narrow that there was really no room for his ships to maneuver. Now, on top of that, he stayed there for over a week, crippled by his anger and depression. Commander-in-Chief Kwon Yul met up with Wan Kyun at Koje Island and yelled at him for his failure. He even struck him across the face. Now this shook him so much that he shut himself up in his flagship and refused to see anyone while he drank. The Japanese, however, would not rest. Squads of ships under the commands of Wakizaka Yasuharu, Shimizu Toyohisa, Toro Takatora, Kato Yoshiaki, and Konishi Yukinaga met at Angopo on August 22nd to plan their next move together against the Korean fleet, which they correctly figured was out in the Chilchon Strait. While they were there doing this, Shimizu Yasuhiro was ferrying 2,000 of his men from Karakdo to Koji Island. He then marched them along the northwest coast to overlook the Korean fleet. Wan Kyun was completely unaware of this. August 28th, in the early hours with the moon still high in the sky, the Japanese fleet sailed to the north end of Chochongyang, where the Korean Navy was anchored. After midnight passed, Three matchlock shots rang out to signal the attack. One by one, Japanese ships pulled up next to Korean ships, and they were boarded. Any ship that managed to escape from the Japanese would then beach themselves on Koje, and then run straight into Shimizu Yasuhiro's men, and were then killed, and their ships burned. Naval Commander Wan Kyun retreated south down the strait towards the mainland with the Japanese in pursuit. His men then beached the ship and tried to run into the hills. Wan, however, was not able to keep up and was caught by the Japanese. Whatever happened to his body is unknown. Yeo Ki, the Chola Wright Navy commander, and Yi Sun Sin's right hand man in the early days, also died. He drowned himself to prevent his head from being taken. I should also point out that 12 ships did in fact survive. Bai Sol, a senior officer, had approached Wan about moving the fleet to a safer area. When Wan refused, he made sure that his ships, under his command, was much further down the strait. When the attack happened, he took his ships and fled. And this is where I will leave you. Most of the Korean Navy, gone. And Wan Kyun, gone. I'll see you next time. Hey, why don't you click on some more of my videos? You know you want to. So go ahead. Just click on one.